welcome to the Forbidden Dinner Table. My name is Zach. And I'm Alex. And we have a very special, very um, unique sort of uh, international serving here at the Forbidden Dinner Table, a special guest um, who is coming to us from India. And um, let, without kind of further uh, dragging it out, let, let's go ahead and introduce our good friend Lokesh to the podcast. Uh, thank you, Zach, for such a kind words from me. And uh, uh, hi, Alex. Uh, so I'm Lokesh and I'm from India. So I remember when I met Jack in my second last organization and there I was working as analyst and uh, Zach was working on the other side like on onshore in US and we started sharing a bond where we used to share things apart from the work. We used to discuss a lot many things apart from work, of course, <laughs> work also. <laughs> and uh, right now I'm working as a data science manager. Prior to that, I was uh, into healthcare insurance uh, business and I have completed my master's in statistics. Apart from work, I enjoy trekking, hiking, and uh, right now I'm into exploring new places in India. So before coming to Mumbai, right now I am in Mumbai. Uh, it's a city in India. I was in Delhi. So yeah, I'm into exploring new cities and new places. And uh, recently I have developed the interest to record podcasts. So I requested Zach and Zach and Alex were very nice to give me uh, this opportunity. So thanks for both of you. Yeah, and you have your own podcast. Podcast, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right. So, uh, we have discussed few points. So, first of all, we would like to start with the c career transition phase. Like we Bo before get we get into the yeah, before we get into the agenda, is one. I, if you want to talk, I'd love to hear just a little bit about your podcast and podcast and your journey there. And then I've got a few. Uh, get to know you questions that are just rapid fire and then I think we can jump into to what you were talking about there from an agenda perspective but um, yeah I would just love you know having another podcaster here what has your journey been with your podcast what is your podcast topic and just you know a quick kind of two minute summary yeah yeah sure 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 so a uh, few months back I recorded a podcast on the data science and machine learning aspect so that was quite technical so let me just give you a brief overview what we have discussed in that podcast so everyone knows like it's an era of machine learning ai it, even if we talk about the google maps or we talk about the tesla self-driving car so all the logics all the algorithms that has been developed they are utilizing the capacity of your artificial intelligence and now chat gpt is the new buzz in the tech world so all these things uh, have been derived from the basic coding of machine learning and data science and then amalgamating with some uh, neural network models so we were just trying to understand like how a layman should grasp all these things so it doesn't matter whether you are coming from a economics background or you are coming from a computer science uh, science background everyone can start le learning coding with basics and machine learning techniques and the use cases are very exciting so if someone is interesting in their uh, switching their careers to a tech side so internet has given a lot of easy courses which one can follow and they can take your, their own time and they, uh, they can follow the courses with their same pace so we were discussing all these exciting stuff in that podcast Zach. that sounds cool i know we cover technology a lot here but it sounds like you do it at a much much deeper level and uh if i go back to you know back when we were working on the same team working in the same organization you and i were always pinging back and forth about different econometrics things so uh i'm sure yes, yes. you are well versed mm. and definitely uh the the right person to be going into those topics and what's the name of that podcast so yeah th uh, that's the era of machine learning gotcha oh, okay yeah cool, I, cool so chat gpt is the the hot new thing and I sort of try to keep up with it, but my wife doesn't know much about it. How would you explain that to somebody in 10 seconds? Or maybe 30 seconds? Yeah, so chat GPT is like mini Google. So it's not much mature right now, but they are adding much uh, more 
capacity to it so uh, yesterday i saw a news like they have invited coders to add their contribution to the chat gpt space so suppose there is a guy who is in 8th standard and he is looking for a uh, say code he wants a code to prepare a pyramid on the screen so he can just type like uh, the c language code for prepare a pyramid on the screen so chat gpt will uh, directly give uh, the code to that person so you can ask anything to chat gpt so it's not that mature right now uh, like the google we have but it's going to be much 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 more better than the usual search engines cool yeah awesome well we got a little bit of your background a little bit of your hobbies i've got sort of 10 rapid fire get to know you questions uh they're in the style of this or that i'm gonna ask them to both of you both lokesh and alex here um and so you just one word answers basically uh and so i'll give you an example of the first one if you're taking a vacation would you rather go to the beach or the mountain exciting yeah we are ready for it would, would you beach or mountain for a vacation beach beach alex uh i'm gonna say mountain oh contrarian uh <laughs> swimming pool or lake lake pool uh, Pepsi or Coke? Coke. So I don't like either of these, but I guess I'll pick Coke. I should have said Pepsi, Coke, or water. <laughs> uh, I'm just not a soda person. So. Uh, Apple or Android? Apple. Android. Pancakes or waffles? Waffles. I agree, waffles. Scrambled Finally, we agreed on something. <laughs> I was just say, yeah. I, I, I someone took six questions. I was thinking, though, hey, this is who you want in a room for podcasts, people with different viewpoints and perspectives. That's true. We could have a whole podcast on each one of these topics. <laughs> That's true. Uh, <laughs> scrambled eggs or sunny side up eggs? A scrambled one. Uh, sunny side up. Marvel or DC? Marvel. Marvel. Guitar or piano? Piano. This one's tough for me. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go with guitar. Comedy show or a concert? A concert, definitely. I think I agree. Concert. Uh, and lastly, more money or more time? More time. Time. Yeah, I was figured that was going to be. Uh, all right, awesome. Um, I was very interested, Alex. I know we've spent a lot of time talking about comedy shows. If you were going to pick comedy or concert, but a lot of that would depend on who it is. But I think there's just so much more energy and a lot of more interesting like creative things going on in a concert than a comedy show but i do love both yes indeed all righty cool well thanks for playing the game i feel like i know you both a little even more now hopefully our audience does too so uh i'm gonna sort of uh go over just a quick real fast tenets of the forbidden dinner table it's been a while since we've done an episode uh just setting the table here what are three main things that are kind of our backbone of the whole point of the podcast or the whole spirit of it number one is we just like to explore the space sort of run in different areas run with the topics um really like a yes and sort of approach number two keep it light keep it approachable i think we learned from some of our previous episodes getting super academic um <laughs> you can get sort of stuck in the weeds so just keeping it light keeping it really approachable and uh lastly not taking ourselves too seriously checking the ego at the door so light conversation and just uh yeah, exploring the space. So um, let's get into it. Um, yeah. yeah, Lucas, you, st you started talking about it a little bit earlier, but one thing we wanted to talk about is like periods of life or when you're transitioning, maybe right out of college um, or into your first kind of career um, or living independently for your first time. I guess I I'll go a little bit of like, um, and I'm just curious, again, opening it up to you guys, but I I'll sort of set the stage where the first things that I start thinking about in this space is, number one, how when I moved to Minneapolis where I live now, and it, I was in a city where I barely knew anyone, and I was setting up a one-bedroom apartment for myself, I realized that the habits that I was setting up at that point in time, like, were going to be very hard to change. Like, I had this moment where I was like, I can start being the workout guy now, or I can be like the this kind of guy now, and I can always change that later, but like I'm setting the baseline. Did you guys have a similar experience when you came out of college or you know were setting up shop you know for your life? 
Yes, 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 yes. So, uh, it's like I would like to share my journey, like when I started living independently, what were the challenges and what were the exciting things that I noticed. Yeah. So, I graduated in 2018, and thereafter, I got an opportunity to work for a consultancy firm. Uh, at that time, I had to move out. Uh, from my hometown and it was the first time I was going out uh, the very first challenge was the house hunting so I was not able to find a good apartment there like uh, the apartment I was able to find that was very pricey so I had to look for the like balance between the my pay and the good community to live uh, finally I got a house with uh, one of my friends who also got the uh, placement in the same uh, company and then we started living uh, together so it was not exactly like living alone but uh, thanks to that friend like who came at that time and we were able to set up the basic uh, kitchen and uh, all things but uh, it was the first time I was uh, away from my home so definitely I was living I was missing my parents and family uh, back from ho hometown but uh, later on things started getting better like I had few friends from my office they started to come to my home we had a housewarming party then we were planning the weekend trip so yes it was like mixed kind of feelings and mixed kind of experiences initially we were looking for a house help and we were not able to find a house help there but later on we got one so yeah that was my experience did you, after you sort of set up, um, you know, kind of your living standards and, and um, you know, moved in with your roommate and set up the kitchen, did you find, I guess, did you, did you like set up hobbies or, or habits that you still continue with today? Or was it kind of this like, I'm going to try something new every month to figure out what I am? Yes, definitely there uh, there are some habits that I am continuing from that experience, like starting from, uh, I always start my day with making my bed and then followed by going to the kitchen for uh, like dishwashing. And whenever I come back to home in the evening from my uh, office, I always look for uh, some laundry things and I just go for all. So basically I have developed some habits that, that are continuing. But when it comes to... Uh, some other things like uh, recently I have developed a habit of uh, cooking so prior to that I was uh, taking food from outside so I wanted to start like uh, should I try cooking on my own so that's a new thing I have developed so every day I am trying to change something in my daily routine and mm -hmm. some, are, some are the habits that I am continuing yeah did I hear you say too that you start your day with dishwashing yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, from the previous day, uh, we have some dishes in the basin. So, I had to start my day with the dishwashing. Interesting. I don't know if I've ever yeah. talked to somebody who, like, that's one of the first three <laughs> things they jump into. No. But, I mean, I, I like it. I've, I've, I've told Alex before that I see, whenever I see dishes in the sink, I, I think of it as free dopamine. Because you can just, like, do this thing that makes me feel good or, like, knocks something really easy off your to-do list. So Yeah, you start feel, your day feel good factor is there, right? right? Yeah. 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 Uh, what about you, Alex? You know, when you first kind of set up and started living on your own, did you feel like you got off on the right foot or that you got off on the wrong foot habit-wise? So I actually feel kind of differently about this altogether because you make it sound like there was a moment like day one or two and you went whatever I do now is going to carry forward to the future and I almost think habits didn't really start forming until uh, like later on because especially if I take going from college to getting a first apartment like I was just still doing the college habits in the apartment it's almost like how the first couple of years of a decade or just the previous decade you don't really find out what that decade is like until the middle of it so I would like take my college things and apply it to the apartment and then slowly things would fall off or change because I was in a new location and then they'd get replaced. I don't ever remember there being a moment where I was like, whatever I choose to do now is going to stick. And, and that yeah. was true moving like from the apartment to my house now currently. Same thing. It's like a lot of it was just the same or we tried to kind of just map the same thing over the house. And obviously some things need to be tweaked and changed and then stuff will kind of slowly fall off because you're in a different location. That's, 
I vividly remember standing in my kitchen right when I moved in being like, I'm setting the baseline. Like yeah. if I don't start working out, it doesn't mean that I can never pick up working out in the future, but like it is only gonna get harder or like I have to add it in rather than like set my schedule that way. But that's even a good example of something I added in later. Cause I didn't, like yeah. when I moved to Texas, I wasn't working out regularly. And then I found a spot and started doing it. Yeah, and I guess I don't want to uh, come off as being like it's it's impossible to change later on, right? I've made plenty, lots of changes since the six years that I've been sure. you know, kind of living more independently. But I will say like some of the things that I, I consciously drove forward uh, on like day one, uh, I'm still trying to drive forward on like making sure that I bring my lunch more than buy lunch at work and things like that. I never had that. The only thing I can think of would be like where you put the dishes because you're, you're probably never going to change which cabinet the cups are in. But as far as like habits and stuff, now for me, I think it's just a longer process to like weed out the old ones and replace them with new ones. It, but it's interesting to hear that we're in different places because when I talk to my roommate too, who is about a year younger than me, so late 20s, right, 28, 29 area, he feels like he's going through that process right now. Like he's sort of shaking off ah. the kind of like five years post-college. Yep. And he's like, okay, as I turn the corner to 30, like I need to set up the baseline. And I was like, I had that conversation internally like five years ago. <laughs> yeah, but that's almost what I'm saying. Like the year 2000 was still the 90s, right? 2005, <laughs> we could talk about what the 2000s were like. Well, and I guess some people maybe never even have this conversation from a baseline. Right. They just always are college <laughs> well, version of themselves. It's very true. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, one, one of the things I'll just kind of add to this whole piece is I feel like what's, what, especially now, kind of five years out after college, um, what I'm struggling with is how undefined the chapters of life become. Like, you know, you've got, you're on sort of a track of like grade school, high school, and then, you know, college wasn't like forcefully pushed on us, but was heavily implied. Um, for, you know, Alex, I felt like in our family. Yep. And I mean, it was a great opportunity that we got to go. But then sort of after college, you then just get this like, 40 year pocket, right? Hopefully if you're kind of planning towards a 60 ish, 65 year retirement where like there is no timetable on like marriage, kids. It's also like, I think of it as chapterless. Like you don't have the defined chapters. It's like and an so, open world game and you just yeah. finished the tutorial. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And now, yes. now I'm like, am I doing this? It's right. And then I constantly think like, I don't think there's a right way to do this because everybody's doing it sort of their own way. But I don't know, do you guys, so do you I'm, both feel that chapterlessness? Yeah, absolutely. That's something I've thought about before. Yes, yes. And sometimes I feel lost. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's fun to talk to people and get different ideas and go, wait a second, you can do that? I didn't know that. One thing that comes up for me is uh, hearing people talk about how like, oh man, everybody in the Midwest is married so young. Like when you're on the coast, you don't get, you don't think about getting married till you're after 30. And I was like, oh, I guess I oh. never thought about that. Uh, that plays in well with something I was going to say, which, uh, Lokesh, do you have a, any significant other? Yeah, so I would like to add one more, uh, one more point to the Jack's conversation. So as we are discussing, like, uh, sometimes life becomes chapterless and we are, we are feeling lost. Uh, so similar experience, I would like to add that I have discussed with uh, one of my friends. So we were discussing, like, there is one thing called a midlife crisis, but we were discussing something mid-career crisis. So when we are uh, when we have started a job and, and now we have uh, five years or six years of experience in industry, sometimes we have a thought to like, should we go for an MBA or should I start my side hustle or uh, should I be quitting my job and <laughs> working for my own venture? So all these things we have like club together in the term as mid career uh, crisis. So it's like sometimes it may bother you for a day or sometimes that uh, thought might bother you for um, for months and you are uh, feeling distracted at work and whenever you are going to work traveling to the work uh, in the cab you are ha having some similar thoughts and you are looking for what other people are doing and what i can do apart from my uh, main job or should i quit the this job so these all type of feelings 
bothered uh, i think uh, everyone goes through these feelings what about your experiences zack and alex i um i it's interesting i th- i think of this as the quarter life crisis when you're at like you know 25 or or something like that where you it's those first few years out of college where you go like oh is this it like is this what it's going to be like every year now afterwards i got to get some hobbies or yeah i totally understand how it's almost the same thought of like well this job can't be it right whether it's a side yeah. hustle or something like lokesh was saying just finding some other way to fill your time and if you can monetize it great but i think it becomes even more important but Al- yeah, alex you had you you were going down a, a different line of thinking before that about yeah so i was just significant others on the habits what i was going to say is you form all of these ones that you think are good and they work for you and they're right and then you get a significant other and they come in and tell you that they're all wrong <laughs> and someone there's this other way to do things you know yeah i've been loading the dishwasher like this for the past 10 years and no one's ever told me i'm wrong but I, apparently i'm wrong <laughs> type of stuff it starts to show up and uh, i just think it's funny that you can have all this you can have your life just so and it's perfect and working for you and then you can meet somebody and they're going to come in and change stuff up true yes that and, happens correct and and then you've got to figure about what are the things that i actually care about is dishwasher totally. loading pattern something a hill i'm going to die <laughs> probably not yeah yeah a similar experiences i had with like laundry so initially like uh, uh, i used to do laundry in a different way then my uh, roommate said and like hey do uh, at p4 level that will take uh, less time and it will be much better for your cotton clothes so yeah i learned that way yeah laundry is a good example too yeah. wait yeah, i, I want to yeah. hear this tip what what did what gave what life changing advice did you get about <laughs> cotton laundry you look at so there were multiple levels like p1 p2 p3 p4 p5 so i used to uh, wash my clothes at level p3 and uh, those were my cotton clothes and that used to take around 50 or 55 minutes and uh, there was a level p4 especially for cotton clothes that used to take around 25 to 30 minutes so that was a game changer for me <laughs> So like P3 was a habit for me and I never tried that thing. So that was the only thing. Yeah. So sometimes we 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 have to unlearn things. So like we keep on repeating same thing so but for, once we unlearn a previous thing or a past experience then we learn something great. Great word. I love that phrase of needing to unlearn and relearn stuff, which is a skill yes. too and, and yeah, certainly. Um I feel like or this is all kind of get pushing towards our next topic uh, especially when thinking about like what are the what are the things that you really care about or like what hills are you willing to die on which our next topic is what are the set of principles that you live by big question right I feel like you could do a whole 10 hours just on this but I I guess I went first on the last one so I'm just curious where does your head where does both of you guys' head go off that question what are the set of principles you live by uh the very first thing that is coming in my mind like uh, acceptance uh the point is acceptance what does it mean that uh, sometimes um, many things happen and we are not ready to accept that thing suppose uh, today i got a transfer to another team and right now i'm working in a very great team but uh, they are suppose they are shifting me to a sales team where i don't want to go so sometimes i have an option and sometimes i don't have an option to say no to top management right uh, but till the moment i accept that thing like i have to go for uh, that role that might be for short span of time i will serve in sales and i will learn something but if i don't accept that the same thought might bother you bother anyone in night and they may have sleepless nights and they may not focus in the current role so the very first thing the very first principle i would like to discuss is the acceptance yeah so would you like to add something to this zack and alex That's a good one. My my only thought you said something I liked which is can I learn something? So even if you're in a situation that you don't want to be in, I think asking that question is is a really cool way to go. Well, even though I don't want to be doing this, is there something that I can learn from it? Uh, I like that. Yes. Yes. I I would say too. I I I 
I love the, the, what you laid out there. Interestingly, I, I thought at first you were gonna talk about like kind of tolerance as an idea, which there's a part of it, but there was so much more to your definition of acceptance. It made me think of, and I'm on a huge kick of stoicism lately. Lokish, are you familiar at all with like the tenets or concept of stoicism? Uh, n- uh, no, no, Zach. I would like to know. Uh, all right, you're you're gonna put me uh, so on the it's spot. Like, uh, it's like psychology. It's one of it's one of the psychology, right? Uh, yeah, it's it's like a combination. I would say it's more kind of philosophy, but there's some psychology components to it. The the, okay. the reason I, I thought of it, and I'll define stoicism in a second, is there's a, there's a kind of tenet or, or a good example in stoicism called amor fati, which is love your fate, which is basically like mm-hmm. whatever you know hand is dealt to you. Just love that and, and lean into it and, and, again, sort of do the acceptance thing. Um, okay. But uh, stoicism, Alex, I'll be interested to, to hear your take or your short definition of it. I would say it's, it's a philosophy of life that tries to maximize positive emotions and reduce negative emotions and help an individual to, like, hone your virtues of character. And is, it's really about um, focusing on what is in your control versus out of your control. Yeah, that's, uh, that's where okay. I would go with it. From what I know, and it's not as much as you, Zach, it is drawing a line between what's in your control and what's out of your control. And if it's out of your control, it's almost like don't even worry or don't spend time you know, spinning in circles trying to get control. Just accept that it's out of your control and focus, on, focus back on the stuff that is within your control to change or make better. I think there's a, a like a, a modern live, laugh, love type quote that's, that's, that uh, kind of um, sums up stoicism, which is, you know, life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. Yeah, that's good. Right. So acceptance, though. I like that. That's a good principle. Yeah, the one that popped into my head, I don't know if this is a principle or more just sort of like a, a saying that I try to remember is try everything once. Uh, which could pair well with acceptance. Maybe it's something you don't like or a food that you're not sure you're going to like, but to really get the most out of life, I, I try to practice trying everything at least once. That's a good one. Yes, that's a good one. It <laughs> makes me think a little bit about like uh, everything in moderation, even moderation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> I'm trying to think of uh, principles or kind of sayings um, uh, that, that I live by. I think one of mine is empty your cup uh, or get out of your own way. Um, like, you know, we have a lot of preconceived notions or at least I have a lot of preconceived notions or like when people bring something to me and I'll be like, why the heck, did, why is a person acting this way or why are they doing this thing that seems totally irrational? But then trying to treat it as like, maybe this person has information that I don't have. And so like empty your cup, check your ego, get out of your own way and, and try to be like the most loving um uh, you know, kind of like yeah, <clears throat> I think welcoming. A, good, a good addition to that is like remembering that even if maybe something bad happens to you if you're driving or something, they're not out to try and personally screw over you. Like they didn't cut you off because it's you, they did it because you're the car next to them. They're not on a personal vendetta against you. Yeah. That's, so just uh, let it go. Let Relax. It go. <laughs> Yeah, one of the principles that. that is yeah, one of the principles that is popping in my mind is the expect less. Uh, so sometimes we expect too much from things, people, work, life. Uh, but when we start expecting less from things and start like focusing more on your work and uh, without thinking about the outcomes, life becomes a little little easy. So yeah. Are there moments in your life where you should expect more? Yes, yes. So, like, uh, it's subjective, like, uh, where to expect more and where not to expect. Yeah. So, suppose I am uh, uh, switching to a new role and I am expecting a very fancy job title uh, and uh, f- fancy team and supporting team and uh, suppose I don't get that, all those things. So, I might get a setback, that might be a setback for me. But if I, if I go with just least expectations and I just focus on my work and I try to adapt in new environment. So, I think that's a better strategy instead of expecting this, that. 
I'll have to add that expect less. I think that's a that's a good sort of tenet. I I think about things as like I ask myself this question a lot, which is, and that will make you happy, like as a question of like, oh, what if I took all my money and went and bought like a really nice car? And then there's a part of my brain that goes off that says, well, like, and that'll make you happy. And a lot of times I have to go, well, no, not really, <laughs> right? Like it, like, it really puts me in check um, and makes me think about the stuff that does matter. And, you know, I, I think about, um, Sam Harris talks a lot about how, uh, like, we are constantly writing this contract with ourselves of like, if I get X, then I'll be happy. But as soon as you get X and you're happy for a little bit, then it will be Y that you want. And then you'll be striving for Y and then Z, right? And I think one definition of mindfulness that I really like is kind of jumping into that formula of like, if I get X, then I can be happy and just racing off, erasing if I get X then. So all that's left is I can be happy and just sitting in that moment. Like you don't need the X, you don't need the Y. There will always be the Z, the next thing, like just sitting in happiness. So one question I always ask myself well, is like, and then you'll be happy? And then I have to say, no, I won't. <laughs> like I could just be happy. <laughs> just be, happiness is a choice a lot of times. Definitely. Yeah. Find so Lokesh, I, I read music and I had a song that Zach and I talk about a lot where some of the lyrics were find what makes you happy and do more of it. Yeah, that's a good simple as that. Simple as that. Sometimes like little things make us happy. Like uh, I bought a plant one day and uh, I was happy for the whole day. And I'm uh, now I'm taking care of that plant every day, and I'm getting some happiness every day. <laughs> Yeah, so small things can make you happy. Yeah, it's actually funny how I'd say probably most of the time it's like little, almost unexpected things. It's not the big car purchase like Zach was using in his example. It's uh, like for my, I was happy really one day because I bought a website domain that I wanted. And I and that made me like Hungry. super, uh, super <laughs> happy for the day because I knew I, I was sort of exploring a hobby. It's not the big ticket things. It's a lot of just little moments. Yeah, I remember once Zach sent me a New Year and a Christmas card and I was really happy like my friend from Minnesota has sent me a card and oh, I right. yeah, so that made me happy. So thank you Zach for that thing. Ah, oh, well th thanks for for saying how happy made you. That makes me happy. I need to write more cards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Zach, anywhere else you wanted to go with that one or uh no, any any last sort of principles or um, things that are making. I, I kind of I, I think Lokesh the the comment you made about there's sort of just small things like um, buying a plant or I don't, don't want to say taking care of something but like there's something about a little bit of responsibility too that can make you happy, um, which may be counterintuitive but that's where my mind went with your plant discipline, piece which I maybe. thought was great. Yeah, discipline. Yeah, I did a quick search for uh, just common principles to see if anything would come up. And the, the one, there's a lot, but the one that I like the most, and we've kind of touched on it, but it's it's a nice tight little phrase, is see inconveniences as adventures. Seeing inconveniences as adventures, yeah. Great point. See them as adventures, yeah. I had an old boss that used to say, dreams die in the comfort zone. And that's a phrase also that I've never forgotten. So anytime I'm pushed outside the comfort zone, it's like, uh, what else can I explore out here? Yeah, I like that phrase a lot. Yeah. Sometimes coming out of comfort zone is necessary too. Like we, we should come out of comfort zone. There's a lot of growth. I think that can happen. Yes. Well, one, of my, one of my friends too at work talked about it's much better to be told to slow down than to be told, hey, you should really be doing more. And like, so, you know, kind of, it's good to healthily overextend yourself, like, you know, and constantly be punching up a little bit. So whenever I'm kind of on the bubble of stuff, I think, oh, okay, it's, it's better to be told slow down rather than constantly people pushing you to do more. Um, and I think that pairs well with another piece of advice I got at work which is, if you haven't done anything in the last six months to get your hand slapped, you're doing something wrong. <laughs> and you should be getting into mm. good trouble. So I like that. Good trouble, yeah. Yes, good, good trouble. trouble. Yeah, I guess though, you don't want to burn yourself out. So balance is healthy. 
That is true. Is that something you struggle with all, uh, Lokesh, or do you have any good uh, thoughts or tips on work-life balance? Uh, tips is uh, that like I think I always prioritize my mental health if something is uh, disturbing my mental health be it ex- uh, like work pressure or uh, people in the company or uh, might be some personal things uh, I prioritize my mental health it doesn't mean that I have to compromise with my work so it must uh, it might be just taking a break and uh, that sometimes taking a break helps uh, helps me a lot like i get new thoughts and whenever i take a break i think about things like uh, how can i uh, improvise over this particular work or how can i handle this situation so i think uh, prioritize mental health and for that uh, we can take a small break that's pretty good alex do you have any good uh, work life balance tips it's kind of the same thing, I guess, is just realizing when you're at the at that point of like, okay, I just need to go step away and take the break. For me, a lot of times that involves putting on like some nice music and just kind of get in my headphones and just like get in my own little zone for 15 minutes. And then it's, it's kind of very refreshing. And then you're ready to kind of go back and take the world on again with a, a fresh slate. That's good. Yeah, that helps. I, th- I think for me, I try and when I'm there at work, I work an eight to five Monday through Friday, I try to be like as focused, not letting distractions, although sometimes they do come up because I'm human. And then if I ever have to do work past five or on the weekends, which in some rare occasions I've had to do, I kind of keep telling myself like, this is a little bit negative, but like, Am I that bad at time management that I can't get everything I need done in 40 to 45 hours in the week? And like, that, that is one of the first things I need to revisit on a Monday. Like if I'm working on a Saturday, I'm con- like one of the biggest things in my mind is like, how do I get better at time management next week so I don't have to do this again? Um, I just always am kind of in that mindset of like, and I understand how someone could be like, that's really negative to be beating yourself up of like, how do I get better at time management? But it's more to me just like, um, hey, you know, you you should be doing something better with your time or more optimally so that you're not in this Saturday position. It almost needs to come from a step above. Like your manager should be saying it's it's not a good thing or a, a flex that you worked on Saturday. Like we actually need to fix that. Yeah. My boss told me if you start answering emails at night just to catch up, that is like a slippery slope but that you'll say that you'll do that one week and two years later you'll have done it every night yeah. that's what he told me he wished he never started answering emails in the evening mm. so I probably two years from now hopefully will be saying <laughs> yeah a few times I worked on Saturday but then I cut it off r- right away rather than being like oh yeah I wish I never would have started <laughs> yeah. I will say this this is probably the, the, the last thing and then we'll, we'll move to wrap up here um, I tell people uh, who have like a work-life balance that sometimes they're unhappy with or when they're late getting stuff to me because they just have so much stuff and they're working on the weekends, I say, hey, if you're working on the weekend, then you don't have time or like opportunity to spend the money that you're gaining during the week with your job. And if you don't have that time or the money, what's the point of having the job in the first place to then get that, you know, like right. if you're getting that money to then spend it on the weekends and you can't even do that, then what's the point of even having the job? Well, or you are no longer coming refreshed and ready to work on Monday because you worked all weekend and now you're just spinning yourself in a downward spiral. True. And no one, you know, we, it's almost like we, we can't expect your best work anymore because you haven't had time to refresh and turn it over to. Going back to uh, what Lokesh said too about taking a break, that's also true like in my hobbies, uh, like creatively, sometimes the best thing you can do is just put the computer down and walk away. Because you just get so into the weeds on stuff and you just need to kind of freshen everything back up. New perspective. Yeah. Or make room for new ideas almost. Uh, because otherwise you're just trying to throw a bunch of stuff around and make it work. You need to just walk away and take a step back. True. True that. Well, I think we uh, 
we had kind of two good questions in coming into this. We covered some good ground. Uh, I'm thinking this was a. I'm thinking this was a fun one, Al. This was certainly yeah, a one. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Lokesh, thank you so much uh, uh, for joining us here. I know it's uh, working this out timeline wise too. It, we're doing this in the evening. It's the morning for you, so uh, we can say to you, have a fantastic day. Uh, as we wrap up things here but thanks for joining us thanking thank you for for helping us explore the the space any last uh parting wisdom or words to uh to our audience here uh yeah i think my only uh, last word should be like uh, we should not take life too seriously and we should go with the flow i love it i like it take it use it live thanks everybody until next time thanks everybody yeah bye all